thank you everyone for attending Cocktails in Conversation with Jenna Rickus, the Vice Provost for Teaching and Learning. In this role, um, Dr. Rickus provides leadership to the Purdue campus in undergraduate education and student success. She received her bachelor's degree in agriculture engineering and in biochemistry from Purdue University and was the first graduate of the PhD program in neuroengineering at UCLA. And with that, I'll pass it over to Jenna. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, let me, I'm going to share some slides but I promise that I will not uh, bore you with, or at least I'll try not to bore you with um, what our students refer to as death by PowerPoint. So we won't, we won't do that. Um, and in fact, I think today uh, a lot of our classrooms are a lot more active than they were maybe when I'm, I'm an alum. Um, and so there's a lot that has changed in the educational experience, depending on when you graduated. I was here as a student in the early 90s. Um, and that's kind of one of the things that I wanted to kind of share with you all today is to just talk about the Purdue education experience today and tomorrow and a little bit about where we're going. So I thought I would um, first share a little bit um, about my Purdue education experience just briefly so that you can get to know me a little, just a tiny bit. And then I want to share um, some of the cool things that are happening, particularly in experiential education. And, um, and I'll talk about what we mean when we say that, and as well as student success, all the things that we have today to support the success of our students. And then to show you a little bit, um, a, a couple of exciting things, and to tell you a little bit about um, Purdue, where we think we're going with undergraduate education in particular. And I know there's a lot of interest about um, what the education experience has been during COVID. And um, there's just, I think several points of pride there. And we just thought it would uh, be great to talk a little bit about that. And I'm of course happy to answer questions um, on that as well. So, and just to check, is everybody seeing my slides okay? Maria, are we good? Yes, thumbs we up. Are. I see good. thumbs. Okay. Yep. So this is my one slide on me. Um, I thought I'd just share my Purdue experience. So I am uh, I am an alum, as I mentioned. I'm just very grateful for all the things that my Purdue education experience has given me. You know, it started with up in the left corner, that's me on my first day of classes uh, through the Gifted Education Research Institute, or Jerry, which is still going strong in the College of Education that provides experiences for kids. So that was me in second grade. And, you know, Purdue has offered me everything from, you know, I've traveled the world, but opportunities to do conduct research and make discoveries. I've met famous people, uh, politicians, scholars, and astronauts. There's um, a group of us up there with Condoleezza Rice. I've been to uh, NASA space launches and been able to take my kids. Um, my son went with me um, for a NASA space launch and it's me and my daughter on the field at a Purdue game. And, um, and I owe a lot to my parents who are both Purdue alums. That's them in the middle with me there. And so they've just contributed so much uh, to my life and to my family. And that's one of the things that's really motivated me. And if you know, you know, all of these things have been transformational uh, in my life. And it's something that we strive for, um, for all of our students, transformational experiences um, for them to grow in their journey and their lives. And so just a, a moment about that to sort of give a sense of where I'm coming from and what motivates me. So I wanted to first talk about a little bit of just um, celebrate some of the wonderful things that we have at Purdue right now. And there, there are things that really did not exist when I was a student here um, arriving in 1991. And so one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about, and that is a huge topic here at Purdue now is experiential education. So what do we mean by that? Well, there's a, there's a big official definition up here, um, but it really just means it's, it's an intentional planned, in other words, there's instructors and people are designing an experience with intentionality for learning and that it's authentic. This is where a lot of the career relevance and life relevance comes in. You know, it's um, not just, it's really learning by doing in real world environments. 
um, that helps develop the kinds of things that we want our students to develop, their knowledge, their skills, their abilities. And it also has a really, um, has student reflection involved in it. We know there's lots of experiences that we all have every day, um, but that reflection piece and really connecting the dots with what we're studying and um, where our students are going in their careers is a piece that really pulls it all together to extract a lot of value. And we just recently did um, a landscape analysis of all the programs at Purdue. I can say with absolute cer certainty, there is at minimum 355 experiential programs. I know that there's more than that. Those are ones that I can count and tell you all the details about. Um, and they range from everything from project-based experience, a lot of external partners. Um, field work, study abroad is, is just tremendous these days, which was not the case when I was a student, but a lot of variation in the kinds of experiences that our students can have. So this is just a picture, picture collage of some um, experiences that I pulled from some of our programs, just to sort of highlight that they are as varied as our majors um, and the disciplines, and they're very student-centric and very relevant. So, um, you know, just a lot of really cool and interesting things that students are, are doing um, through, their, through their studies. Uh, am I moving? There, oh, we jumped. Okay, what I wanted to feature um, is, and I don't know if you all are familiar with our entrepreneurship and innovation certificate program. This is something that was built here at Purdue by Professor Natalie Duval Coutil. One of the things I want to do today is I think it's really important to acknowledge um, the many women leaders and creators we have on campus. So I'm going to try to do that as we go. And Natalie would be awesome for uh, cocktails and conversations, actually, um, to learn more about this at some sometimes maybe put it on your uh, future wish list. But um, she really built from the ground up what now serves 2,000 students that this is a, um, a program that exists for any student in any major to engage in entrepreneurship and innovation, uh, education, and a lot of practice by doing. So this is super relevant um, for students who maybe want to start or run their own companies, but also for just the modern workforce requires a lot of flexibility, adaptability, innovation, and creativity um, among our students. So a lot of skill development for, um, for managing their careers. And it's been um, really celebrated and growing. There's over 50 courses are run from this. And again, all majors across campus. Um, and has been uh, honored with uh, many national awards as of recent. And one piece of that that I thought would be fun to um, feature as well, oops, is um, one of the option courses in here is specifically women in leadership. And this has been around since uh, 2008. And again, over really broad participation across majors. And in this class right now, over 40 majors are represented in this. And so I think it's a really um, wonderful opportunity for our, our students um, to, to study in particular women in leadership. And so I wanted to feature that as a part of the entrepreneurship and innovation program. Okay. Sorry, just a little like delayed when I advance my slides. Okay, here we go. Now, Epix is one you may have heard of before. It's been around for 27 years. But sometimes um, we tend to sort of celebrate and put out there sort of the latest and newest innovations. And this is one that I wanted to be sure we featured because it is, it is a global model and has continued to evolve and grow and has such an impact on our campus. So Epix is um, engineering projects in community service. And so students are learning to design, they are designing solutions for real world problems with community partners. And so they're actually creating products and designs that serve a partner in the community. Um, and the, the community can be local right here. It can be across the state. It can be around the world. And so again, uh, design, but open to not just engineers, multidisciplinary is a really big feature these days. And we know when our students go into um, the workforce in their lives, 
uh, the kinds of problems they're going to work on don't fall nicely in just one lane or discipline. They're going to have to collaborate with um, all kinds of um, people with all kinds of different backgrounds. So this is a really important skill that our students learn in experiential learning. They also learn from each other. So you can see here, it, this, these programs, you can participate in all four years that you're here and actually grow in your own leadership and roles that a student might play in their projects. And so that is very cool to be able, and an important piece too is first years. You know, used to sort of be the model, well, you know, your junior year, your senior year, you'll get into maybe the real world where you start to apply things, really shifted that model where really trying to get students into real world authentic experiences right out of the gate. And it, it helps um, advance their classroom learning um, and put context and motivation around. And so again, a real leader been around for 27 years. Um, and sorry, just so slow going to the next slide. Yeah, and then it skips. Okay, here we go. Um, and, and this has really grown, as I said, into a global model. Purdue is now considered the global headquarters for EPICS, but it is actually expanded. They lead a university consortium of a coordinated consortium of 50 universities. Uh, all over the world that have um, adapted and implemented this model. You can see even just here at Purdue, the impact is huge with the number of students and the types of projects they work on. Um, and they've also expanded into younger um, ages with over 100 high school and middle schools involved across 17 states that work on EPICS projects. And it's it's been honored by the National Academy of Engineering, um, as well as an, an IEEE um, signature program. And again, in the spirit of acknowledging and honoring women, um, I wanna acknowledge uh, Professor Leah Jamison, one of our distinguished professors here, and uh, Dean Emerita of Engineering, who was an EPICS co-founder. Um, today, Bill Oaks runs the program and is uh, one of the co-founders as well. But again, in honoring women, I really wanted to, she was a real, is a real trailblazer and really led the way in um, this type of experiential learning called, that we call service learning, where you're really serving the community as students are learning and doing real world projects. So a lot of this um, emphasis has, I feel, has really contributed to Purdue's recognition as a best value university. I mean, value is really the quality of what you get over the cost of what you pay for it. And you have to um, work at both, both the numerator and denominator of that equation in order to get value. And the types of experiential education that I'm talking about really, in my mind, contribute to the quality. So in this picture here is one of our newer and exploding and big uh, experiential programs called the Data Mine. It's only been around a few years, um, but its impact is tremendous. You see Professor Mark Ward here. He's a professor of statistics in the College of Science. And they have um, built what started as a learning community of students has been scaled up to a residence hall scale, an entire residence hall devoted to um, acknowledging, you know, we have recent years have shown data is transforming our lives. It's transforming careers and industries. And Purdue uh, in recent years launched an awesome data science major in the College of Science. Um, and there is, and, and computer science is exploding. Um, there's also a recognition that these kind of skills are important for nearly all majors. It's relevant in one way or another to almost every major on campus. And in fact, just being a, 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 an educated citizen, I think we've seen that during the pandemic. You know, we've all had dashboards and data thrown at us and people interpreting them in different ways. And that sort of data literacy has been really important for people to just even make decisions and navigate in their lives through um, the pandemic. And so acknowledging this data literacy, these data skills that are critical. Um, and we've brought in, in this case, um, we have corporate partners 
that their students and cohorts are working on real world data projects with companies that are very wide ranging. Here you see some students visiting uh, their corporate partner Ford. Um, in here is a list of in 2021. Here are the list of um, companies and partners that that participate students were. And again, this starts in first year. Much like Epics, you can participate in all four years. Uh, if you want in no matter what major that you're in. So again, this opportunity to grow and um, get some of this real world experience is so relevant. Already this list is, I said this is from 2021. It's out of date in this year, 21, 22, we're up to 47 corporate partners and project and over 60 projects. Some companies have multiple projects and we expect even more um, next year. And um, participations of students, 800 to 1,000 students. So this has been a really tremendous and, and just exploding program. Okay, I said I wanted to talk about student success too. Um, so the, uh, the other thing that I think has changed so much, not only just the proliferation of really incredible experiences for our students, but also the student success programs and the wraparound support um, and it used to, I think, be support was, um, you know, in in the mind of if you if you were struggling, you needed support. That whole story has flipped around. Um, and at Purdue, the the support systems are that's we and we tell our students this. Purdue is a challenging place, right? And strong students seek support. It's a, it's a feature of strong students. You know, it's not just for when you're struggling. It's for, it is sometimes you're struggling and that's an opportunity to grow. And so right here, I'm just um, even just featuring a few things that we have, everything from academic support, student orientation, access and retention, um, and a number of things that are really foundational to our student support systems. We've got interconnected units that serve students at various stages of their journey. Um, different students, we have everything from, you know, we our, our disability resource centers, very strong. We have an academic success center that serves all students and, and has some special programming focused in on those really challenging first and second year courses. Our veteran success center, we have um, support and enrichment services for our adult and, and parent students, um, first generation students, just all kinds of really wonderful um, support. And orientation has changed a lot. When I was here, orientation was pretty minimal. You know, now you may have heard of Boiler Gold Rush, which is our humongous um, orientation program, but even it keeps evolving and um, new ways to serve students. There's Boiler Gold Rush International that has some special programming focusing on our international students. During COVID, they, they innovated um, Boiler, what they call Boiler Cold, C-O-L-D Rush in January, because we had a lot of students that were coming in it um, in the January term. We had, um, you know, some students that in their first year couldn't make it to campus and were fully online and maybe online for another semester and needed to come in, the international students who couldn't get here in the fall during the um, pandemic, et cetera. And so they just keep innovating. Um, and increasingly, our summer programs are exploding. And so we're almost moving towards a year round orientation type program and onboarding for students, very student centered, no matter. Um, where they are and when they're coming in. And so constant uh, what I innovation in those spaces. Oh, this was really cool. Uh, recently, the Indi um, Indiana Higher Education Commissioner, Teresa Lubbers, in her um, uh, state of the commission and uh, higher education speech recently, uh, featured one of our students uh, Leroy here, he's one of our Purdue Promise students. You may have heard of 21st Century Scholar is a statewide scholarship that um, serves um, students from low income families in the state uh, who are uh, on track for college and go to college. And so what we did at Purdue, Purdue Promise is a wraparound support system for those students in that scholarship program. And they have made uh, 
tremendous um, really strides in outcomes and success of 21st century scholars at Purdue has become a model program. So uh, Leroy was featured by our commissioner recently. And as you can see in his quote, you know, he really wanted to emphasize that he was the first in his family um, to go to college and he was able to finish uh, debt free. Um, and, you know, and he's just talking about what a difference that made in his life and how, and how really wonderful that is. So I thought that was really cool that he was uh, featured in our Purdue Promise program was featured across the, the state. So what's next? I thought I'd share a couple cool things of um, some of the innovations on the horizon. And uh, strategically first, I'll say, um, Purdue has, uh, you know, what are called Purdue moves. It's our um, strategic areas that um, are defined and blessed by the board of trustees and the president. So at the highest levels, these are our strategic initiatives. One of those is transformative education. I've been talking about experiences that are truly transformative in a student's life. And, and a vision of our transformative education move is that Purdue really strives to be the most innovative residential learning program in the US among research universities of our size. And so we wanna be the best here in the education experience that we've been talking about. And I want to um, just give some acknowledgement to a recent investment from the Lilly Endowment. They've funded a $5 million project to, um, to fund what we call the Innovation College, which is really a mechanism to fuel, um, disseminate, and sustain innovations like some of the programs that you've heard about, transdisciplinary programs being able to connect across the disciplines and students learning in that space and experiential education. And we want to really transform higher ed itself to that continuous improvement to always be doing better for our students. So I thought I again thought I'd feature a couple um, cool things coming out. And so um, the things I'm going to show you are technology based. So the innovations are, are are absolutely not limited to technology, but the technology ones are really cool. So I thought they'd be fun to sort of share here. So what is sort of the classroom of the future possibly look like, or at least some of the classrooms of the future? So what you're seeing here is an innovation out of our Department of Physics in collaboration with Purdue's um, Envision Center. Our Envision Center is our where um, a lot we have strong institutional capability in um, virtual reality and augmented reality um, and visualization and lots of cool technology like that. And a lot of the workforce that builds these things are actually our own students. So our students are having learning experiences while creating future learning experiences for other students, which is kind of cool. So this again is out of physics. What you're seeing is, um, a representation of a supernova, so exploding stars. And um, what would normally have been represented on, you just see a bunch of like numbers up in the right hand corner. That data is of that supernova explosion is brought to life in 3D reality where students can actually go into an interactive classroom in virtual reality with a professor while walking around and manipulating this supernova. So he can lecture. You see the professor here with the tie on actually interacting with the supernova with students in the room. And the cool thing is you're seeing students in the room, but these students could actually be anywhere in the world and come into a virtual classroom and actually interact with each other, the professor and the lecture material. Um, and so this is really, um, I think, quite amazing. And we're going to see even more of this. And what's really cool is we often think about and talk about well, technology, you know, is pulling our kids away from engaging. But where we're seeing technology like this adds the most value is not to decouple people, but to actually increase enga engagement and new kinds of engagement such as this. And we're going to see a lot more of this. So this next one is another way. This is coming from our um, ASL uh, faculty, again, in collaboration with uh, the Advision Center. 
And so what you see here is one of our um, ASL professors who they are motion capture. Um, they're capturing the ASL um, language and the professor's movements in order to create new um, and advanced learning materials where students can be interacting or 3D or they can rotate. And so the kinds of things that they can learn in a live environment, they can also have access to and study outside the classroom, practice with and interact with um, in order to learn and practice their um, ASL, which is really very cool. So this last one is another, um, this is a simulation environment. So think of this, uh, this is coming from our College of Education. Um, and think of this almost as a flight simulator, but for teachers. And so, you know, one of the things they know that is managing classroom behavior um, is an intimidating and challenging task on any day, but especially for first time our student teachers going into classrooms for the first time. And so this is a way for them to practice and learn and get experience even before they step into the real world classroom. And so you can see there, um, this is a simulation, teaching them in, in real time with real time feedback, how to manage um, disruptive behavior in the classroom. And you can see the instructor can set um, the behavior level from on task to level five, <laughs> level five disruptive behavior sounds a little intimidating to me, but that's kind of the point is that students can get here and really hone and practice their skills before they get in the real world environment. So again, this, um, you know, not a replacement of in-person interaction. We have, that has been a huge lesson of the pandemic. In-person interaction is critical in so many places. And what we're seeing technology is really um, enhancing and adding to not replacing um, in-person interaction. So uh, these are just some really cool examples that I thought would be fun to share with you today. So um, with that, I thought I'd just take the last couple slides. I know a lot of people are interested in sort of what the experience was during the pandemic. Um, here are just a few slides of examples. And, um, you know, I have to say this is an area I'm really proud of um, the university. And we had so many people really move mountains to make possible um, the continuity of education and learning. We had um, more in-person interaction during the pandemic than um, any peer university of our size while keep keeping people safe. And the kinds of, um, I saw tremendous innovation and adaptation by our faculty, staff, and students to do this. And I'm just, am so very proud of that. Um, and, you know, and everything from online options to safety protocols in the classrooms and in keeping the laboratories going, um, the students were incredible during this time and our community was incredible um, to hybrid classrooms you see up in this right corner. And this is what we're gonna see more and more of too, mixed being able to bring in learners. We didn't just say, okay, you can't get here from your um, home country, whether you're a new beginner or um, a continuing international student, we're gonna engage you until you can get here. And that's the kind of thing you're seeing in the upper right-hand corner. Um, and, and also continuity for students who had to quarantine or isolate. We launched a lot of programs to keep them learning and keep them healthy um, during that time. And I'll say sort of connecting this back to um, the last things I showed you that we were, um, here's an example from the College of Engineering. So the College of Engineering had been working with the Envision Center on virtual labs um, things like digital twins of existing real world equipment to augment and supplement our hands on labs. And they were already doing that work um, well before the pandemic started. But because they had been innovating in this space, they had digital representations and interactive ones of some of their labs and equipment. So they were able to, in a way, 
um, pivot and keep laboratory learning in a virtual environment rather than those, those in-person labs just gr grinding to an absolute halt. So it was still a humongous lift, but because they had been innovating, they had a lot of foundations and things in place that they could leverage uh, and use. Um, way back in March 2020, when we had a, a very sudden and rapid lockdown. So I think, um, you know, being uh, innovating, uh, constantly innovating helps you to be prepared for the unexpected. So with that, those are just some of the things that I thought would be cool to share with you. And now I'd say, uh, let's chat. <laughs> I want to hear from you. Thank you, Jenna, for speaking this evening. Um, really appreciated you um, providing all those answers. So everyone, the next Cocktails and Conversation is scheduled for Tuesday, March 8th which is actually International Women's Day at 7 p.m. And we will be featuring Dr. Wu, who's actually on this call this evening. She's the Associate Professor of Industrial and Organizational Psychology at Purdue University. Dr. Wu will share research-based insights into the psychology of openness and humility amid political and societal divisiveness. The event registration link is in the chat. Also, one last thing is that please save the day. Our Purdue Women's Conference is scheduled for June 9th and 10th. This year's event will take place at the Alexander Hotel in Indianapolis. It's designed to be both a conference and a retreat while we'll address traditional conference topics. A particular focus will be placed on personal growth, mindfulness, and wellness. Also, this link is in the chat. Again, thank you, Jenna. I really appreciate you being here tonight and all the participants for attending. I hope you enjoyed this session of um, Cocktails and Conversation. So hail Purdue.